Steph, we could hear you before you came up here. You were shouting loudly and clapping. Is that because you got to talk to us today? Absolutely. That was my response and reaction to Raymond giving me the honor today. Uh, how was the game at Stanford last night? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, the score was kind of crazy, but uh, watching uh, the, the team, watching Cam, our junior year, kind of get her feet wet uh, for this coming season. They got big things on the horizon, hopefully, so hopefully it won't be the last one I'll be at. Also, you were the model for the new city jerseys. All that stuff came out today. What do you think about that new design? Oh, it's dope. Um, I've worked with Human before on some projects, and she designed a uh, community center in Oakland that we refurbished like four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was the first project I seen her. I know she has an amazing portfolio and to be able to design our jerseys and, you know, obviously in terms of empowerment, women's empowerment, um, the story behind all the details of the jersey. Uh, it's loud, but it's uh, it's pretty dope. Your um, numbers this year so far have been uh, really impressive. And I'm wondering if, is there anything behind it? I mean, what, how do you, I guess, uh, explain just how well you're playing right now? Uh, I mean, it's, some people would say it's a championship hangover of um, you know, how our season started, but it, part of it is championship confidence of, you know, how the last year ended, how I was playing, the uh, the work I put in the summer, ultimate confidence, and just letting the game kind of come to you. Um, you know, depending on how the defense is playing you, depending on what the game calls for, got to keep doing it so we can continue to hopefully, you know, get wins and make strides and, you know, continue to play better in all facets of our game. But, um it's not surprising. It's just, you know, what I expect to do. The 50, 40, 90 thing, you're obviously right there. Um, is that still something that you kind of, at least mentally, yeah, you look forward to? Absolutely. We we'll always talk about efficiency and, you know, the standard that you set, especially as a volume, you know, sh uh, shot taker and scorer, that's really hard to do. Um, I only done it once, but came close a couple of times. But it is something I, I strive for just because you know what it takes to, um, especially the 50 part. That's the hardest part uh, because of the shots that you have to take, the attention you get on def from the defensive side and, and all that stuff. So if I can be efficient, be productive, and hit those numbers, that usually means good things. And, and what do you think, what would it take for you to get – um, for, for life to be easier for you on the court? What do you need from your teammates to make life easier for me, for you? Um, I mean, we all are in the same boat of trying to do, again, do all facets of the game better. Um, and it's the, sometimes it's the not so glamorous stuff, the, uh, the box outs, the defending without fouling, the the energy you have to play with um, every minute that you're out there on the court. Um, I think on offense, just being able to hit the open guy, quick decisions, make the defense read, react to you know ball movement and body movement, which is our system. Everybody being in sync on that on that end, it makes the game easy for everybody, not just me. So um, those those details we talk about a lot we get questions about it a lot we understand that's the difference between being seven and four and four and seven so uh we got to be able to figure that out and if clay and jp get going what do you think is i guess the potential of this offense championship caliber um you know kind of pick your poison type situation where you don't know where it's coming from you have to uh, worry about shooters all over the court. You got to worry about uh, you know, Draymond driving down the lane, having options on all on both sides. Uh, I think the big picture, we're not really worried about the offensive side. We, we never really are. It's usually the other stuff that um, gets in our way in terms of becoming the team that we want to be. 
following up on Clay and Jordan, you were just talking about the importance of playing within the flow of the game. And Steve has said how sometimes he feels that Jordan has been trying to force it a little bit. Clay said the same thing about his performance. How do you not overthink what you're doing on the court, especially when you are struggling and just take a step back, have that patience um, and just try and let it come to you because it's probably harder than it sounds. It, it is because we're all competitive. We're all extremely confident in our abilities. And you feel like you can always just will yourself out of anything. That's how we're built. Um, I'm, I get tempted with that all the time. Uh, even, you know, the stretch in the middle of last season that I had where you don't want to be afraid to take the next shot. You don't want to be doubting yourself when you have an open look. You don't want to be second guessing, you know, trying to be creative and force the issue a little bit, but, you know, showcase what you're, what you're really made of in terms of your skill set. And we're all kind of victims of that at times. But being really intentional about, again, just letting the game come to you, that means different things for different people. But it's usually when you make the simple play and the play that the game tells you to make, the ball finds the, the guys that are supposed to be taking shots. Um, it's funny, me and Jordan were just laughing in 5 one I wasn't even involved in a play. I just stood in the corner, put my hands out, and people realized on the other side that I was open. Obviously, nobody's guarding me. It's five and zero, but the ball came and found me, and I wasn't even part of the drill just because you look like you're ready. You let the game. It's a little kind of sign of just how the game works usually. So, you got to trust it. You got to trust our, the way that we create shots. You got to, um, you know, be okay if it doesn't lead to results right away, but. That's usually how you get rewarded in the long run. You talked after the last game about instilling confidence in guys like Jordan and stuff when things aren't going their way. Do you feel like, I mean, I know he's an uber confident dude and he's competitive, but like, do you feel like his confidence is maybe taking a little knock just because he hasn't been seeing the results he wants? Uh, I mean, how he explains it, I, I, that's up to him in terms of the words that comes out, but I know it's, uh, it's somewhere in the middle of, you know, not being passive, but not uh, trying to force yourself into situations and in the shots that just aren't there. So if it'd be, it'd be different if you're talking about somebody that you weren't sure that could do it. Like, we were all kind of talking around a little bit just because we know he's capable of playing at a very high level, being an elite scorer in this league putting a lot of pressure uh, on defenses. Uh, they had a whole summer to scout him. They know what he what he likes to do, his tendencies and all that, and you have to evolve right along with um, that preparation now that other teams are putting you know on, on you. So embrace it for him. That's the biggest thing, embrace it. Um, you know, even in my 13th year of last year, I had a a really rough uh, shooting uh, streak for almost two months. Everybody goes through it, but you can't you can't lose your confidence. You can't become somebody you're not on the floor. So that's that's the um, the challenge for him. Steve said that um, the last few days have been mostly about guys getting sort of defensive fundamentals. That's not the word he used, but he described it, and it sounded like that. You know, blocking out, hands up, and stuff like that. Um, what do you guys, what do you think you guys need to do to get your defense back to where it has been in the past? Honestly, it's just that. It sounds so simple, but it, it really is. Um, we have the personnel. We have the um, ability to switch a lot of different, do a lot of different positions, play traditional with certain bigs, uh, use our athleticism, length. Um, but if you don't give yourself a chance to make your presence felt on defense, man, without, you know, by fouling and them going to the free throw line, getting easy buckets, getting second, third attempts at, at uh, possession because they're getting offensive rebounds, all that stuff just negates all the work that you put into the fundamentals or the, the principles of your defense. So um, I think that's the biggest lesson for, for everybody. Like we have to be accountable as the vets to do the same thing because we were guilty of – dumb fouls and you know lack of focus on that on that side and the young guys have to experience that as well because when you're playing four minutes or 20 minutes 
you know, it could come down to two or three possessions that you're involved in that change the whole momentum of a game. Um, and you look around the league, you know, games come down to the wire all the time, and there are a lot of teams that are two and eight but have lost, you know, single-digit games. They've been in it all the way down the stretch. You think three or four possessions change the uh, the outcome. Um, and we've been, you know, on the, on the wrong side of that too many times early in the season. Going back to Jordan real quick, um, can you tell us what year four might be like emotionally? Because at age 23, he is a young guy, but he just signed an extension. He's already seen a lot of basketball, which kind of would let him graduate from young guy status like where do you see him kind of fit as far as young and old in the locker room oh uh, that's a good question actually because he's experienced a lot um you know just being 23 whatever that age means i think you know you're in that ability where you know who you are as a, as a player um you have a certain expectation based on your stats and, you know, just the way it feels out there on the court, how you fit into, uh, you know, what we do here and, and understand you impact winning. But then that next step of the consistency um, and, again, you know, more time for people to understand who you, uh, what your tendencies are and scout you and put better defenders on you for more, more parts of the game, all that stuff. It's kind of like a rite of passage that you have to go through. Um, and so I'm sure he's extremely, he's, he's a uber competent guy anyway, but uh, there's another evolution, another level to get to on that front. And he's going through it right in front of our eyes. So it's, it's, uh, it's something I know will pay off for him down the road. And, uh, you know, it's, it's why, you know, that, that contract means, you know, we have a lot of confidence in who he is and his ability to to kind of live up to that. Does he project as someone older? Like I had to check before I even asked the question. Okay, he's 23. <laughs> uh, I, I, yes, yes and no. It's also, forget like Moo, JK, and Wise and them, or you, you think they're a little older too, but they're still, like you just look at it on the page and, I'm wearing some shoes from 2013. Um, and I asked JK, yo, how old were you in 2013? He said he's 11 or something. I'm like, I literally started laughing. And I walked away. Uh, so all of them are just in the, it's, I, don't even, I might be too far removed to, to uh, make some reads on that. But it is kind of crazy to think what they're experiencing at that age, you know, and why I was moving out of my dorm at Davidson. <laughs> Uh, and at the same time, he's been in the league for three years. So it's kind of crazy to think about what these young guys are going through and kind of gives you a little bit of perspective. So what's the hardest part about um, trying to be patient with the young guys while at the same time, you know, you, you, you want to win? I mean, what's the hardest part of balancing that and, and working your way through that? Uh, I think just the... The, the daily uh, reminder of what the challenge is for this team, specifically, is different than last year's team because you had a couple more vets that were playing significant minutes in our rotation. Um, it's reminding yourself not to, you know, lose hope that, that we're going to get there and that this, this team is going to be capable of the level that we want to be at come, you know, April, April May, June. Um, and... Like again, it's for the for the vets to understand. Like we have, we don't, we're not perfect by any stretch either. Like we've been playing well. We the numbers say what they say, but there's another level that we can get to, um, and hold ourselves accountable to what that is. But then also doing everything in our power to lead by example and show the guys what to do, and also help them along by, you know, coaching them up as as best we can. Um, whether it's in the game and practice and the in-betweens. And, you know, a lot's happening. We're only 11 games in. It's kind of just – it's because you want it so bad, you 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 feel all the emotions of the roller coaster that you're on. And so 
just trying to remember the big picture where we're where we're trying to get to, um, and all that stuff will reveal itself in due time. It's we've all been through that. How important is it to to bring Dante back into the fold and adding another veteran to the second unit, and also maybe starting to find a little bit more con consistency, I guess, with the rotation and what that could look like moving forward. Oh, uh, it'd, it'd be big because he's he understands how to play winning basketball. He showed a lot of positive signs before he got hurt. And he was brought in here for that specific pur purpose to, you know, give us amazing depth, plug some holes as a ball handler, defender, score, um, and play some significant minutes for us. So it would be good to get him back, get him, get his rhythm back, figure out what the rotations will be, you know, with him available. And I know he's he's chopping at the bit to help us. Um, he, you know, he wasn't on the road trip, and so he – he knows he can help us uh, play a lot better and can't wait to see it happen.